Welcome to the final video in this nutrient series. Make sure you check out the full nutrient playlist for all the videos we've done up until this point. Also, don't forget to download the guide that goes along with all these videos. It's free. You can download it right here or the link in the description box or just jump over to humblegrowthhydroponics.com. Looking at leaf chlorosis as a whole to identify what's going on in your plant isn't a great place to start. In this video, I'm going to break down these subtle nuances, these things that you can look for. We're going to discuss nitrogen in particular, these other nutrients that'll block out nitrogen, how to really work through the system of understanding leaf chlorosis beyond just looking at the leaf and saying that's turning yellow. Let's an example i followed this one image of this leaf with leaf chlorosis to uh, being identified as three completely different nutrient deficiencies it says it's a calcium deficiency here here it says it's a nitrogen deficiency and here it says it's an iron deficiency so sulfur is actually the only macronutrient that I haven't mentioned in this entire macronutrient series and we'll get back to sulfur here in just a minute just know that it teams up with nitrogen to create chlorophyll now the majority of the time, a nutrient deficiency within the nutrient water itself is not actually what causes leaf chlorosis. And sometimes a quick fix can just be to check your pH and make sure you're not locking out those particular nutrients. If you're wondering what I'm talking about with that, then check out this video all about pH and nutrient lockout because your pH is responsible for giving your plants the nutrients that it needs at these particular times. So your nutrient reservoir could be full of all the nutrients the plant needs. You can have your EC could be just perfect, but the plant can't access any of those if the pH is off. So I always encourage people when they start seeing leaf chlorosis, the yellowing of the leaf, to go ahead and check your pH first. When you start to see any signs of anything weird happening, check your pH first because your pH opens the doors for the other nutrients. So the reason that I wanna hover around nitrogen as the main focal point for leaf chlorosis right now is because a lot of other uh, nutrients can, can lock out the plant's ability to take in nitrogen and use it the way that it needs to. And so a lot of other nutrient deficiencies can identify as a nitrogen deficiency. The first culprit there is calcium. And it's actually not calcium deficiency that locks out nitrogen, it's calcium toxicity. So if you have too much calcium, then it will lock nitrogen out of your plants and then they'll start to yellow. Now one subtle difference between regular nitrogen lockout and nitrogen lockout due to calcium toxicity is that the tips of your leaves the very tips and the edges of your leaf before the discoloration happens will start to turn brown. Another good indicator is that when you have a nitrogen deficiency overall, the older leaves tend to get hit first and then the newer growth will eventually experience chlorosis as well. Calcium toxicity, it hits the plant all at once. So that's a great way to determine if it is calcium toxicity, if you have too much calcium in your water rather than it being a nitrogen deficiency. Now, staying with calcium here, when you don't have enough calcium, when you do experience a calcium deficiency, it does create yellowing of the leaves, but it's much more easy to identify. Uh, however, a calcium deficiency also looks a lot like a manganese deficiency. They both start to create these little spots on your leaf in between the vein. All right, so now let's move back to sulfur. Sulfur is a very important macronutrient, not only as a powerhouse for enzymatic functioning in your plants, it kind of helps to regulate things. It also, like I said before, is a building block for the amino acid in the leaf known as chlorophyll. And because it teams up with nitrogen to create the amino acids, Whenever you have a deficiency in one, it's going to look like a deficiency in the other. The only way that I've been able to tell the difference between a sulfur deficiency and a nitrogen deficiency is that a sulfur deficiency will show up in newer growth first before it shows up in the older leaves as where a nitrogen deficiency is the other way around. That's one thing you need to keep your eye on is how old the leaves are that are starting to turn yellow and experience this chlorosis. And that's a good indicating factor of what you're gonna to need to do with your nutrients. Potassium deficiencies can also show themselves with leaf chlorosis. However, I've noticed potassium deficiencies tend to start at the top of the leaf and work their way back. And they also tend to have more of an aggressive lean towards like just killing the leaf. You notice a lot more browning happens with potassium deficiencies before the entire leaf turns yellow. With, with a nitrogen deficiency, you might see the entire leaf turn yellow before the browning occurs, but with potassium, the browning occurs very quickly. Now phosphorus shows itself in a really unique way. A phosphorus deficiency is, is pretty easy to spot because you're gonna to start to notice purple coloring around the veins. But the purple discoloration is a telltale indicator of a phosphorus deficiency. 
in one way or another, a lack in any of your macronutrients could create leaf chlorosis. It's just up to you to, to see these little identifying factors and know which nutrient could be potentially causing that, which is really tough sometimes. It's hard for me to just sit here and tell you what's causing your plant to look the way it's looking because one nutrient could be blocking out the other one. Your pH could be off and that could actually be blocking out your nutrients. There are a lot of variables that you need to take into consideration when you're actually trying to diagnose your plant. So let me run you through a checklist of what you should do if you start to notice leaf chlorosis. And this way you can keep an eye on things and, and sort of help to limit it down and be a detective of your plant's nutrient deficiency or toxicity. The first thing I do, of course, is check my pH. Make sure my pH is set right so that my nutrients can actually be received by the plant and absorbed. Secondly, I'll look at the type of discoloration that's happening. Is it spotty discoloration starting from in between the veins going outwards? That'll help me to determine whether or not this is manganese or calcium deficiency. Or is this something that's starting from the edge of the leaf and the whole entire leaf is just turning yellow? If the whole entire leaf is turning yellow and nothing's really happening around the edges, then it's possibly just the nitrogen deficiency. But if we're seeing browning around the edges, and it's turning yellow, and there's a good chance then that's calcium toxicity. Then just remember that your nutrients that you're using likely already contain calcium and magnesium, so I would start with a smaller amount because you can easily cross the threshold to calcium toxicity, and then you'll start to notice other things begin to happen. If it is nitrogen, then that's a really easy fix. You can just use your grow formula or your macronutrients and add more nitrogen that way. But like I said, very rarely is it actually just a nitrogen deficiency. Even before I added more nitrogen to my garden, I would still look towards the possibility of sulfur or uh, calcium toxicity before just adding more nitrogen because a nitrogen overload can also make really strange things happen to your plants and particularly with your flavor. So if your NPK nutrients are off, your nitrogen, your potassium, and your phosphorus, that's a really easy fix because those are available in large quantities in your hydroponic nutrient blends. So all you would really have to do is just add more or do a complete swap out of your garden's nutrients altogether. Because there is a good chance, we never know first off what our plant has taken in and what it's left behind. So there is a good chance that uh, what we're reading on our EC meter is a lot of leftover nutrients depending on how well we're catering to our plant's needs throughout the growth stage. This is why I prefer to use a three-part nutrient solution so that we can give the plant the exact nutrients that it needs throughout its entire growth cycle rather than just dumping a bunch of nutrients in there and hoping for the best because as the plant grows it knows what it needs and it absorbs those nutrients out of the water leaving behind what it doesn't need so when you read your ec then what you're actually reading is a bunch of nutrients that don't really matter because your plant's not using them anyway. So if you want to have the most beneficial nutrients in your garden, then use something like a, a three, four, uh, even a two part nutrient solution would be better than just kind of pouring all your nutrients in there and hoping for the best. For more information on nutrients and particularly indoor hydroponic gardening, you're going to want to check out the School of Hydroponics. I put together a five module huge course on everything that I know about building, setting up, maintaining, and running your indoor hydroponic garden. So. A lot of you have already gone through that and I'm so happy to see your results and a lot of you have gone from becoming student to master to teacher now and that's such a cool transition to see and I love seeing everything you're growing so keep sending me your pictures, keep growing and don't forget to check out HumbleGrowthHydroponics.com. Let's grow together.